Hi, I'm Shane. I'm Kelsey. And, and that's this is Dixie. Dixie. And, and we're, we're Love, Love Hut, Hut for, for Life. Life. We've now been on the road for a little over 500 days in our self-built sledding camper. That's right, guys. And over that time period, we've hung out with a whole bunch of other people who live similarly to how we do. We call this series Interviews with Nomads. And this week, we're asking all of our nomadic friends what the worst thing about living on the road is. Well, we'll tell you what our answer is at the end of the video. You guys stay tuned to the end. All right, the worst thing about nomad life, um, oh. <laughs> currently it's, uh, you know, like being able to shower and go to the bathroom, right? So I've been just squatting in a hole in the desert, you know, which kind of works here, but if you don't have a space where you can like easily dig holes, I actually don't mind it out here, but I don't know what I'm gonna do when I'm somewhere where it's not as easy to do that. Um, and then showers are probably like once a week, once every four to five days right now, which I do miss my daily showers. So, um, I don't mind like at all, but it's probably the worst thing about it. <laughs> um, I haven't thought of that yet. I haven't had, oh, I hate it when my poop goes in the pee section of my composting toilet. <laughs> I think that's the, like the worst thing that, that rins my day. I don't know, getting a knock on the door every once in a while, but that's really not that bad. But that's probably the worst thing about it. Um, being neck deep in the middle of a build and not having to come from home yet, that's... <laughs> but these are bad. These are not bad things. Um, probably the, like, increased effort you need to make to recognize what is home. Uh, and, and to make home all around you and to experience home in the places you explore. That's like difficult, but it's also a good thing. So like, it has to be like the worst thing, like what's the worst thing about living on the road? And it's like, oh, it takes effort, I guess. <laughs> like, but it's like so good. It's so fun. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Golly, see, oh, that's vulnerability right there. Um... I think because we can move and we do move, um, not having a place or feel like we have a place anywhere, um, it's almost like a two-edged sword. Um, yeah, feeling like you, you don't have a place, even though we carry our place everywhere. It's, yeah. That and being lonely, if we're by ourselves. Well, even when we're not, still lonely. It does get lonely. Yeah, mm. Honestly, yeah, mm, kind of, it it's like having a bathroom, not all the time. That's the worst part for me. I mean. Uh, perfect cool. girlfriend answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about for you, James? Uh, life is a bit more fragile. Like, one thing that is kind of a pain in the ass, like, for anybody even living in a house, can be, you know, catastrophic for somebody living in a van, you know, like, you know, automotive work. Because if it's huge and they need to keep your vehicle and you're not allowed to stay in the lot, you have not only lost your ability to get around, you've lost your house and you need to figure out what you're going to do until you get it back. <laughs> um... Access to showers, probably, uh, because of COVID, so many of the states uh, have put restrictions in place that make it hard for me to go to like Planet Fitness and just get my shower like I normally would. You can't in California, you can't in Nevada, you can't in Oregon, you can't in Washington. Um, the only places that I've found recently that have open showers are in Arizona, so. Um, that and, uh, you know, uh, going to the bathroom, you know, like I can go pee anywhere, but you know, like shitting in a bucket sucks, but sometimes you do it. The worst thing for me, and I do this to myself, is the isolation. I, I do very much like to be alone in, in very remote areas by myself. Once I get there, I don't want to leave. 
it's, it's just absolutely beautiful. So I, I kind of end up a little, t well, not a little, a lot torn. I want to stay. I want to be in the area. I'm connecting with the space that I'm in. and I'm really feeling grounded there so much that even though I do want to get up and do that crazy, like get out of Dodge thing, I don't want to. My body does not want to leave where I'm at. So I go through a little bit of isolation anxiety and that can make me a little depressed but then I'm in this beautiful surrounding and and that kind of alleviates it so I have angst with that so that's the hardest part of it I want to be there but then again being human being this human creature I want to be with others and I want to be in community but then again I'm in this beautiful nature <laughs> so for me that's the biggest challenge just reconciling my desire yeah, to be out be away and introverted and by myself in nature and then wanting to be social and wanting to be in community and around other people. And your damn vehicle breaks down. The worst thing about living on the road is... Being away from family, I'm say. Being away from family. Um, I can't think of anything else really. Maybe if the diesel is high, like in California, it's $5 a gallon. That's pretty crappy. So we try to stay away from places where the diesel's super expensive. But really, I can't think of anything terrible. We, This has been just an awesome journey for us. We love it. Worst thing about living on the road is gas prices. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, and even gas isn't that bad. We have a diesel. And uh, we get decent mileage for the size of the home that we tote. And it's, uh, I really can't think of anything, you know? I mean, other than gas prices, but that's our number one expense is gas and eating out. And, and we just do that in lieu of a mortgage. Uh, you're constantly moving um, if you are in one place for a while. If, if you have a rig that's really built out, uh, then it's great. It feels like you're home. But if you're in a rig where you're just not 100% perfect or, or in love with it, you're, for me personally, I'm always like, man, it'd be nice to have a big bed sometimes or it'd be nice to just have a hot shower every day. Or you, you miss those creature comforts of living in an apartment or living in a home. Um, for me, for, sometimes I do, but it's not as bad. I don't know. Those are the bad parts. No, no hot showers every day. and no big comfy bed every night unless you have a rig that has that which i don't i have a nice small little van so sometimes it gets a little cramped all right guys those were a lot of really good answers to a really tough question because living on the road is so awesome and affords us incredible opportunities like the spot that we're in right now it's really hard to ever think about the negative side of it um but unfortunately there are a few that a couple of people have mentioned for me, I think the biggest thing is just the stigma from other people. So people who live a quote unquote normal lives, you know, when they see our rig, they think it's so cool. And then they find out that we live this way full time. And there's definitely some judgment there and just some misunderstanding. I wish that there was less of that. I think the hardest part about living on the road is adapting to it. It can be a bit different. You have to go about things differently. Um, but just, it, it's a total switch up from living a, a normal type of life in a sticks and bricks home. I don't think it's negative, but it would be the worst part of it for me. So like Aiden said, it takes effort. It takes effort. <laughs> yeah, it takes effort some days. But for the most part, you get to do this. And that's what I'm grateful for. Yeah, definitely. Well, guys, I hope that you enjoyed all of these uh, nomad interview answers because we certainly enjoyed asking the questions and spending all of this time with these people. Thank you to each and every one of you who have been part of this and a big thank you to all of you who are watching. We'll see you next week. Peace out. Bye, y'all. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure and hit that subscribe button and thumbs up. There's new videos every Sunday, Wednesday, and Saturday. See you soon, guys.